Thank you so much for having me today. It was nice to see Mark and hear about the amazing work that we continue to do at PNG. Today, the theme is yes and. Let's talk about what that means first. I love this quote from Scott Fitzgerald, which is, the test of a first-rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposed ideas in the mind at the same time. I believe when we're able to consider the power of yes and, we're able to unlock new ideas and new business opportunities. Because ultimately today, we're talking about business at its best. And for me, business at its best is all about people being at their best. Now, whether it was 11 years at Procter & Gamble, whether it was with retail, with hospitality, or even Mark Zuckerberg, everybody talks about people being the most important thing. But now I look after an agency. And in fact, at an agency, we're only people. So it's really helped me think at a different level about how we unlock the power of business and people. Fundamentally, on the left-hand side of a Venn diagram, you'll see business. On the right, you'll see people. And when we look at the middle, what we see is the power of yes and. So let's go through just a couple of examples of how we can unlock the power of that middle space. On this next slide, we've got exploit. Now, this is taking a core capability that we're outstanding at and leveraging it for continued growth. On the right-hand side, we've got explore. And this is looking at new opportunities and potential for growth. That's that middle space. There are some who are great at exploiting, but like Polaroid or BlackBerry, if they don't continually explore new business models, they will eventually become obsolete. On the other hand, those who explore but perhaps don't have that solid foundation from which to leverage may peter out as well. So one great example for me is Google, which constantly exploits a very strong sales model and yet sets aside a separate team called Moonshots to look at new explore opportunities. So one question for us is, as we're looking at yes and for ourselves, how are we looking at that intersection of exploit and explore? On the next slide, the age-old question on the left-hand side of brand equity and on the right-hand side of sales targets. This is not one or the other because when we unlock that middle space, we unlock incremental value. Now, we just came off of Double Eleven Singles Day in China, the biggest shopping day of the year. And one of the key clients is, while I will always use Pantene, we do work closely with L'Oreal, <laughs> which stands for because I'm worth it. How do you maintain that French equity and yet continue to drive sales in a highly commerce environment? I'll share with you one of two very quick cases today that brings to life in the following film how we find that intersection of value between brand equity and sales. It's the world's biggest shopping event of the year. Also, arguably the planet's most competitive e-commerce battlefield with 200,000 brands participating. In the past few years, Chinese beauty brands rose to the top in sales. They gained their success through capturing the attention of Chinese beauty consumers. So, how can L'Oreal break through the fierce competition and achieve business success? By leveraging the brand's French equity and technology. What does French mean to Chinese consumers? <laughs> Aside from the Arc de Triomphe and the Eiffel Tower, it is most famous for world-renowned fashion and beauty. La Maison, L'Oréal Paris's brand house, is a collection of their most advanced products. To bring the best of the brand to Chinese consumers, we created La Maison L'Oréal Paris in China. a glimpse of the brand's inspiration for beauty. Discover its secret behind these golden doors. Perfectionist Zhu Yilong. Qin Zhilei, the crazy scientist. Luma, our cheeky receptionist. Creating La Maison, L'Oréal Paris won the Great War of Double Eleven, 
achieving incredible commercial results while giving consumers a better understanding of what L'Oreal is all about. La Maison is not just a theme for a one-off e-commerce centric campaign, but an iconic creative platform that can stretch and extend, opening new doors for the L'Oreal brand to support all women on our journey ahead, because we are all worth it. And what I wanted to share, but wasn't able to update the slides, is they just did it again. We just came off of Double Eleven two days ago, and L'Oreal was again number one. I think this importance of brand stewardship coupled with understanding the commerce platform and what it takes to drive sales, the intersection of that yes and is a really powerful one. Let's talk about the next intersection of yes and, which is online on one hand, which is understanding digital platforms and social media, as well as offline, which is still the important experiential element. When we are able to find that integration between online and offline, we unlock holistic customer experiences. This is something that's really close to my heart because in the last 10 years, I've worked at Apple, Intercontinental Hotels brands, and Starbucks. Everything here has been about OMO, we call that online meets offline. And this is all about human-centric experiences that are insight-driven and tech-enabled. Along the bottom, you'll see three KPIs that we hold ourselves accountable for in addition to the traditional brand equity, sales, revenue, GMV targets. The first one is unexpectedly mind-blowing. So when we open the roastery, actually Mark and I talked about this at Signal a couple years ago, which is we got to hold ourselves accountable to creating an experience that leaves consumers awestruck. We can measure this with met metrics like, I've never seen anything like that before, never thought about that before. How do we create never before online merges with offline experiences? The second one is, how can we as a brand help consumers express their own aspirational values? How do we help consumers say, I stand for something? One example is something we did with Amazon. Across the world, the Chinese are known to read less than any other consumer. So how do we help Amazon sell Kindle books? Well, we used Myers-Briggs and we created an algorithm that helps everybody discover the book that fits them. The campaign was called Everyone is an Amazing Book. And this type of experience was amazing. We had over 2.2 million consumers playing, a 14% click-through rate, and a 69% increase in sales. So when we find that intersection of OMO, we can unlock amazing holisticity and value. And on the third one, personalized service is something I believe we should all hold ourselves accountable to. So how do we help consumers say, I feel cared for? For instance, we work with GSK and they were selling a product that can help with COPD, a lung disease product. And instead of advertising the product, we leveraged a mobile device to help consumers blow into their phone and test their own lung capacity, identifying whether they had an issue with a really cool engagement that kind of was grounded in a Chinese culture of ink blowing. These types of things can help consumers not just feel sold to or engaged on a superficial level, but they help the consumers say, I do feel cared for. And we know that 77% of consumers worldwide are willing to pay more for personalized customer experiences. So how are you unlocking the intersection of online meets offline? The fourth business intersection is where purpose and profit meet. That yes and looks like impact. And you've already heard some incredible experiences and um, branded offerings that uh, Mark had shared with everybody. I have one that I'll share with you that not only helped a traditional financial company stand for something really meaningful and offer good to the world, but also drive significant sales. So I handed him my credit card. Look down, look back up at me. Oh wait, so you're really a girl. If we see you again, you know, we're basically gonna kick your ass. My friends were like, the guy has a knife. And I was like really paranoid about it and it really fucked me up.
MasterCard will now allow transgender people to use their chosen names on credit cards. In an effort to fight discrimination, the company is introducing the true name card. That means the name on the credit card owned by a transgender person may be different than what's on their birth certificate or driver's license. and be like, oh, that's me, that's, that's Nolan, that's like who I am. I love that case. Not just because they end with a Venn diagram that sort of matches my yes and style. I think, you know, I worked at P&G for 11 years. I've worked at a number of companies on the client side over 22 years. I never worked with McCann. As an, as an advertising or creative agency. But the work that we do really calls to me personally. So in the beginning, um, you guys were referencing the boy that we have in our spare room. It's really important for me to find that intersection of purpose and profit. And what I love about this company is I don't feel that I chose an agency. I chose a company that said we want to help brands earn a, a role in consumers' lives through meaningful work. And I think that's an opportunity for all of us regardless of industry, regardless of which side of the business we're working on. And that really comes down to my last, last yes and, which is about the intersection of two maybe seemingly incongruous ideas, which is humility on one side and confidence on the other side. C.S. Lewis defined humility as thinking not less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. So to me, these are not two opposing ideas, but together, humility and confidence can help us as leaders inspire followership by being authentic, by being intentional, and by leading with purpose. So there are four ideas that we've covered today about yes and. It's really on the left-hand side, not in either or. It's not about a trade-off, about choosing amongst existing options or operating with a scarcity mindset. Rather, on the right-hand side, it's about the power of and. It's about seeking that win-win, about finding imaginative possibilities, pursuing them with a growth mindset. So, yes, and is all about finding the intersection of exploit plus explore, which unlocks growth, the intersection of brand equity and sales, which unlocks value, finding the intersection of online and offline to create holisticity, finding where purpose and profit meet to have meaningful impact, and last but not least, finding that intersection of humility and confidence to define the kind of leaders that we want to be in today's workplace. Thanks again so much for having me. I hope you took something away from today's talk, and I would love to continue the conversation with you. Have a great rest of the conference, everyone.